It has seemed right before we turn away from this place where we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donovan Rossa, that one amongst us should, in the name of all, speak the praise of that valiant man, and endeavour to formulate the thought and the hope that is in us as we stand around his grave. And if there is anything that makes it fitting that I, rather than some other, I, rather than one of the grey-haired men, who were young with him, and who shared in his labour and in his suffering, should speak here. It is perhaps that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation, that has been rebaptized in the Fenian faith, and that has accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian programme. I propose to you then, that here by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian, we renew our baptismal vows. That here by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man, we ask of God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of soul, as belonged to O'Donovan Ross. Deliberately here, we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself in the dock, Irishmen of one allegiance only. We of the Irish volunteers, and you others who are associated with us in today's task and duty, are bound together and must stand together henceforth in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition of freedom. It is Tone's definition. It is Mitchell's definition. It is Ross's definition. Let no man blaspheme the cause that the dead generations of Ireland served by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave not in sadness, but rather in exaltation of spirit that it has been given to us to come thus into so close a communion with that brave and splendid gale. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who are themselves splendid and holy. O'Donovan Rossa was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid in the Gaelic strength and clarity and truth of him. And all that splendour and pride and strength was compatible with a humility and a simplicity of devotion to Ireland, to all that was olden and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland, a holiness and a simplicity of patriotism, of a Michael O'Cleary or of an Owen O'Growney. The clear, true eyes of this man, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland as we of today would surely have her, not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. In a close